This is the only aircraft carrier on Earth that can project power like an American supercarrier. But that doesn't answer to the American president. It wasn't an American supercarrier, though it shared its DNA. It wasn't a Chinese vessel either, though its presence was meant for Beijing to witness. This is the FS Charles de Gaulle, the only nuclear-powered aircraft carrier on the entire planet that operates completely independent of the United States Navy. Take a second to think about that. While most close allies are still relying on American fuel or support for long missions, this ship answers only to France. This ship is like a floating nation of 42,000 tons powered by nuclear reactors. It doesn't ask for permission and it doesn't need any help. It simply goes where France decides it goes. When it cuts through contested waters, it carries more than just fighter jets. The FS Charles de Gaulle carries a message that even in a world ruled by superpowers, one European nation still has the will and the power to project strength across the entire globe on its own terms. So why do American admirals call her one of their most valuable assets in NATO? To really understand the FS Charles de Gaulle, you kind of have to understand the sheer ambition behind it. By the 1970s, France assessed its existing carriers, the Clemenceau and the Foch, and identified a looming problem with them both. These ships were conventionally powered, they were aging, and they were tied to fuel tankers and foreign ports, which meant that their global reach was ultimately on someone else's terms. So France then made a breathtaking decision. They wouldn't just build another carrier, they would build the only nuclear-powered aircraft carrier on Earth, outside of the U.S. Navy. This wasn't just an upgrade. This was a declaration that France would maintain total strategic independence. This ambition came with a colossal price tag, of course, both in money and in challenges. The ship's construction started in 1989 and was a roller coaster from the start. The project was starved of funding and work was completely suspended on four separate occasions throughout the 1990s. The final cost would balloon to over 3 billion euros and the ship was commissioned in 2001, a full five years behind schedule. And the troubles didn't end there either. During initial sea trials, the ship suffered a humiliating and shocking failure. One of its massive propellers broke off and fell to the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. However, through determined effort and major refits, the French Navy transformed this troubled vessel into the formidable warship that it is today. The ship is powered by two nuclear K-15 pressure water reactors, commonly seen as PWRs, which provide a speed of up to 27 knots. The 61 MW turbines are from Alstom. The propulsion system has the capacity to provide five years of continuous operation at a speed of 25 knots before needing refueling. Then there's the real party trick of the Charles de Gaulle, a feature that separates the true supercarriers from the rest. While nearly every other carrier outside of the United States was using a simple ski jump ramp, the Charles de Gaulle uses the same complex system as the American Giants. This is called the Catapult Assisted Takeoff But Arrested Recovery System, commonly seen as Kato Bar System. This system basically uses a steam catapult to violently hurl aircraft off the deck. This brute force method was the only way to launch heavily loaded warplanes. It allows the Charles de Gaulle to fly with the Rafale fighter, loaded with fuel and a massive arsenal of weapons. More importantly, it's the only system that can launch the E-2C Hawkeye. The carrier typically carries about 30 to 40 aircraft, forming a balanced and lethal punch, ready to deploy whenever the carrier needs. The core of this deployable force is the Dassault Rafale jet plane, a fearsome fourth-generation fighter known for its incredible versatility. This plane can bomb targets on land, it can dogfight, and even attack ships at sea, all within a single mission. 
Supported by the Hawkeye, this combination of nuclear freedom, catapult power, and a balanced air wing is what makes the Charles de Gaulle not just a symbol of French power, but rather a genuine and sovereign instrument of power. This was proven in a historic move that shook the foundations of European defenses. In a powerful signal of unity, France placed the Charles de Gaulle and its entire strike group under direct NATO command for a major operation. This wasn't a simple exercise either. It meant that for a period of time, Europe's most powerful warship was taking its orders from the Alliance, proving itself as the central pillar of European naval power. In a massive demonstration of power projection, the carrier and its battle group sailed all the way to the Indo-Pacific in the Clemenceau 25 deployment. There, it conducted joint exercises with the navies of the United States, India, and Japan. It even sailed directly into the contentious South China Sea performing freedom of navigation drills with the Philippines. This was not a friendly tour, it was a deliberate message to the world that France can and will operate in strategic hotspots. While the Charles de Gaulle is a masterpiece of engineering, it pays a price for its uniqueness. France has only one aircraft carrier. So, when the Charles de Gaulle enters its scheduled 18-month refit for maintenance and nuclear refueling, the French Navy then has zero carrier power, which creates a critical gap in its global presence. And the story doesn't quite end there. Charles de Gaulle's reign has an expiration date. This date is around the year 2038, where it's scheduled to be replaced by a new behemoth, the Pang, the Porte Avion de Nouvelle Génération. This new generation aircraft carrier will be a massive leap forward, weighing in at 75,000 tons and featuring the latest electromagnetic catapults. It's designed to ensure France retains its sovereign, world-class power for decades to come. However, this, of course, brings up a few crucial questions we want you to weigh in on. Firstly, with the massive cost and complexity, is a single sovereign carrier like the Charles de Gaulle a smarter strategy for France than being totally reliant on allied navies? And secondly, if you were designing the Pang, what's the one capability you would prioritize above all others? And lastly, in a modern battlefield filled with hypersonic missiles and drones, do you think massive aircraft carriers are still the kings of the sea? or are they becoming vulnerable targets? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. I'll see you guys in the next one.